Hi, my name is Matt, and I am to Shade Tree Auto Mechanics what Paris Hilton is to neurosurgery. But despite that, I know enough to know that this engine has a rod knock. The technique I'm going to show you applies to any engine so that you can easily and for certain diagnose rod knock and also which cylinder has the rod knock using pretty much a ratchet and a screwdriver. So I've already determined that this is the cylinder with the rod knock, so I've already done this test now. What I've done is I've removed the spark plug and I've inserted a straw. A lot of people when they're looking to find top dead center, which is what I'm trying to do here, they'll use a screwdriver or something like that. I like to use flexible things so I don't take a risk of jamming up and breaking the pistons. But um, you'll see this black dot on the straw to help see the movement. And I'm going to turn the engine over by hand with a ratchet through the wheel well in this vehicle and watch for the movement of the straw. When the straw gets to top dead center, I want to keep going so that I see the straw moving down again, and then I want to stop. So I want to carry the piston to the downward stroke past stop, top dead center just a little bit. So let me go ahead and turn this ratchet here, and, and it's kind of hard to see the straw, so if I hit top dead center, do me a favor and yell, will you? All right, so let's turn this ratchet here, and I should already have it, so it should be just about at top dead center. So now it should come on the downstroke, and it's going to have a little gap here because of the rod knock. And now it's moving down. Okay, so I want to go ahead and stop right there. The piston is on the downward stroke. I can now do my test. So now I'm going to take this screwdriver. I'm going to put it into the spark plug hole, and I'm going to there it is. I'm going to feel for the top of the piston. Okay. I am now resting the screwdriver on the top of the piston. I don't want to push down yet or anything. Just want to feel for the top of the piston and rest the screwdriver on it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to push down kind of sharply and I'm going to listen for any sound and most importantly feel for any movement at all of the screwdriver. There'll be quite a bit on this one. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting for wad knock. Okay, did you see the screwdriver move and did you hear that click? Maybe you heard the click of the piston moving and that's basically the rod hitting the journal of the crankshaft, which is what the cause of rod knock is. And if you're not familiar with that, then I'll explain it. But this is 100% confirmation there is rod knock in that cylinder because if there is any movement at all that you can feel, then that test is conclusive, it's rod knock. So I'll show you exactly what the mechanics are of what's happening in there uh, right over at the bench. So what we've got here is a crankshaft with one single piston on it. And you can see the piston moves just ever so snugly on the journal of this crankshaft. There is just thousands, thousands of an inch of play that you really can't even feel. It just feels like this thing is just snug up to the journal on this crankshaft so you can barely wiggle it or anything. Now, let me show you what happens with rod knock. Okay, so this is your piston set here. You've got your rod and your cap and you notice that the rod and the cap have bearings and these bearings are exactly what snug this piston up to the journal. Now what happens in rod knock is these bearings are so worn that most likely they're probably completely gone and now you have nothing to secure the piston to the journal. So now the piston is very loose on this journal and this is what the rod knock is. As the crank is turning, the piston is banging because there is now a lot of space without those bearings in there. The other thing is these bearings will actually end up completely disintegrated in your oil. If you ever change the oil on an engine with rod knock, you'll think that Tinkerbell lives there pretty much because it's going to have all kinds of aluminum glitter in it from these bearings being destroyed. So what we're doing in this test is, remember, we've got this piston and it's all loose and everything, but what we did was we brought it up to top dead center. So now the piston is at top dead center. Now of course if we push on the piston now, nothing's going to happen because the piston is resting 
right on the journal. However, remember we went past top dead center, so now the crankshaft is going to engage with the bottom of the piston, the cap. That creates a gap in the top part here in the rod. So now as we're moving down, we've generated a gap as the crankshaft is pulling on the cap to pull the piston down. What we did was we then took a screwdriver and by pushing on the piston, we close that gap. We can feel the movement. We can hear the rod hitting the journal, basically simulating the rod knock, and that's what this test does. So I hope you found this helpful.